Hello students, I'm going to um, show how to set up Clojure on IntelliJ for Windows. Uh, here I'm using uh, Windows 11, but um, the process is basically the same for Windows 10. Um, I have actually not um, tested much that process yet um, because myself I'm using Mac, so please bear with me. Uh, hopefully it's not gonna be um, too bumpy. Um, so the first thing you need is uh, to install um, Java. So I'm going to, um, using a virtual machine, so uh, it might be a little bit um, uh, not always very smooth. Um, so about that, it's really the first time I am using that. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need, uh, so I'm, I'm using a machine that has absolutely nothing installed on it. Okay, so, and again, I'm assuming it's gonna be really the same thing on um, Windows 10 and um, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. So the first thing you're gonna need is to install Java. This is pretty something you already have. Um, Java download um, and so, um, download Java for Windows and here you're just going to select download Java and install here um, the other thing you're going to need is um, the Java development kit so uh, download JDK Um, and here, um, JDK 20, um, but earlier version work as well, right? So, um, we're going to just select the right, uh, architecture here. So it's on Windows, um, we're going to select the installer, um, and so, uh, yeah, these these files you probably already have, uh, given that you've done some development before. Uh, but we, we need Java and JDK because Clojure runs on JVM. So ultimately, that's um, uh, uh, we can't do without it. Um, so I'm going to uh, install that. Java successfully installed. Oh, okay. Yeah, we need to finish the first installation, the installation of Java before we start to install the JDK. Um, there you go. I'm leaving everything by default. Okay, so this is installed. The next thing we're going to need is what is called Lining Gen. It's, it's an interpreter for Clojure. It's really the core um, tool to, to be able to implement and, and run um, Clojure. Um, and so it's, it spells uh, Lining uh, Gen like that. Um, and so if you type Lining Gen, you can just end up on this this with this first result leningen.org if you click on that um, you have you can click then on install here and they show you a um, they propose here a, a script uh, so we're gonna uh, we're going to download the uh, the script here the line.bat so you're gonna right click on line.bat and do save uh, link as. Um, so this is a this is a script. It's a Windows batch file. So just find um, um, a place where you wanna put it. So um, it could be in. Um, 
the desktop for instance in my case um, but it's not ideal um, you could have in um, the user in users um, in your um, user folder um, a uh, dev folder and we're gonna just put it here save um, yeah, they, there's a warning here because uh, these kind of files can do all kind of nasty things. This one is to be trusted. Um, and so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to need, however, so um, let's go back to where we saved it. Uh, we're going to need to add some environment viable uh, for that one. Um, so here uh, you can click on the top and just select the path here and uh, copy it. So control C um, to add it to the environment viable. Um, so to do that, we need to um, go on this PC, right click properties, and we're gonna go to advanced properties. I'm not used to Windows 11, so I'm gonna have to find where it is. Um, uh, usually there is something called advanced oh advanced system setting right here uh, and same thing Windows 10 has advanced system setting like right away it's actually easier to find uh, and then you're gonna click on system properties to on um, envir environment variables uh, and here you we're gonna change the path um, um, the path for the environment variable so that um, basically Windows knows immediately where to find the, the line command um, so we could do either the user variables or the system variables. Um, I suggest the system variables uh, so that any any other user on your machine can have access to uh, to it. Um, so here we select pass and we select edit, edit, and then new. And we're just going to paste our C user Hugo dev here, right? Because this is where our line is. Um, I could have called it differently and just put line actually it would be better to have another folder for it so i'll let you manage that if you want to use a specific um, folder just for the lining and program we're going to click um, okay and okay and now uh, we should be able if we opened if we open a command um, prompt so um, here so we're going to cd into our dev uh, we should be able to type line here and should be able to find it um, no it's not um, um, I, I'm used to Windows so I forgot how to read it um, dev we do have oh unconfirmed interesting so I think it's because our download keep report this file as safe okay so I think uh, we need to do something here keep anyway okay so these are probably some additional security features that are not on Windows 10 because I've never seen that before keep anyway and now it's called line not bad <laughs> um, so um, so now now we have the right name here um, and here if I do uh, line yes okay so I'm seeing what I want to see so um, the first time you run it, um, it actually needs to self-install. Uh, so you're going to type line self-install. Um, and it's going to install itself um, because the, the, um, it contains a batch that needs to um, uh, install a few files. So now if I type line, um, the command is recognized and it's, it's working. Um, and by the way, I don't need to be in the, because of the environment variable, I don't need to be in this specific folder. 
for it to for the comment to be recognized. Okay, it's taking a little time because it's uh, a bit of time because it's well first because it's I'm using a VM with limited memory, but also because it's the first time I'm uh, executing it. So yes, I'm seeing what I want to see um, here. And again, if I do a CD, uh, how do we do that here? Yeah, CD dot dot. And I mean, anywhere else, I mean, I mean, Hugo instead of dev and I do line, it's still going to find it because of the environment variable uh, we set up earlier in the system properties. So, um, gonna let it do that. Um, I'm going to go back to dev uh, because I'm going to create a new project. Uh, before I do that, I can just show you, we're not going to use it much uh, because we use the REPL actually more in IntelliJ, but you can actually run line REPL. Uh, you actually have the definition here, starts a REPL station. Um, and uh, if you do that, uh, you can do it from pretty much anywhere. Um, if you do that, uh, you're basically starting a, a closure server where, that, where you can query some closure commands there. Um, so if, if you want to play with closure and test different functions um, uh, independently of a specific project, you can actually run it as part of a project. But I would suggest to do that within IntelliJ and we'll see that a little bit later. But just to show you that uh, with Liningle, you basically already have a full closure installed on your machine. So now we have a, uh, we, we have um, a, a ripple server open and we can basically uh, query any kind of closure function and uh, it's going to give you the answer um, um, uh, something like this for instance um, would work uh, but you can also use um, built-in commands like uh, map Uh, ink, which is going to uh, apply the increments to each of the elements of a list. Um, so uh, it's just interesting to see that um, this this already should should work, and you should should be able to play with that. Uh, but what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a line new app, uh, and these keywords basically are uh, for creating a new project, right? Uh, because in our context, we want to create a an interpreter, I'm going to call it in the context of our CS390 course, I'm going to call it CS390 interpreter. Um, and so what it's going to do is create a, a folder, CS390 interpreter with all the files we need for a new project. So now if I look uh, what is um, in dev, uh, here I now have CS390 interpreter with a series of files and we're going to be able to open those um, with IntelliJ. Okay, so we actually we can CD into CS390 interpreter to um, do a line run. And if I do line run within the folder, it's going to uh, run the the project and um, and just uh, display hello world, which is a typical. Um, the typical first program, uh, and we'll see we'll see inside the the code inside the source where where the this hello world uh, is. Oh, sorry about that. Um, but for now, we're going to um, put that on the side and install um, IntelliJ. So, IntelliJ Community uh, Edition download. Um, so not the ultimate, which is. Um, the not free version you just need the community version edition uh, which is free and it has everything you need uh, so we're done in it right now um, it's taking a, a bit of time um, and uh, and so we're going to be able to open our project from IntelliJ. The great thing about IntelliJ is that it's an ID so you're going to be able to debug more easily uh, to have the right um, some um, 
real time uh, compiler and 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 syntax check and um, uh, and all kind of things that are uh, really interesting. That's also one of the great thing about uh, great things about closure compared to other functional languages is that it has all of this um, IntelliJ capability, particularly because it runs on on JVM um, and therefore it's um, it works nicely with IntelliJ, which which um, is primarily made for Java, but also works with all kind of languages. As we'll see, you can add plugins, and in this case, we're going to add a plugin specifically for for Closure. But you can add plugins for other languages. Uh, it's a really really nice um, ID, and I suggest if you're not uh, familiar with it, that you give it a try for even for other languages. Um, so our dot exe is downloaded. We're going to now install um, uh, yeah we can create a shortcut um, and yeah that's pretty there you go so um, it's now um, finished installing um, I'm going to run IntelliJ Coming, take a little bit of time. Don't get this anymore. There you go. Just waiting for it to load. left for a while and it's coming back. Okay, so now um, the first thing we're going to do is to install a plugin for Clojure. Um, and it's probably for all the syntax and being able to um, to have IntelliJ um, interpret all our Clojure code and interact also with lining in properly. Um, so uh, we can either go directly into plugin here um, is also the possibility to go uh, into files. Um, it's not a Mac anymore, but so I don't have files on top. But there are other ways to get there. You can go to the preference of IntelliJ IDEA at some point and um, and get into plugins, and that's exactly the same thing. But here we can just do it directly from the welcome window. Uh, if we go to plugins and um, we tap. We type closure here. We're going to find all kind of plugins for IntelliJ that have to do with closure. Uh, we're just going to need cursive here. So that one. Um, again, sorry, it's a bit slow because it's running as a VM. Okay, so um, here we have cursive. We're just going to do install here. Accept. And it's going to require us to restart very likely the the application restart id so we select restart id restart there you go
So now that we have our plugin installed, um, we can open um, our project. Um, and here we're going to open our uh, CS390 interpreter project. So we go uh, to um, dev, and there we go, a CS390 interpreter. Uh, we select OK, and we're going to open this as a closure project. Hopefully, yeah, I think it's, it's opening it. Again, it's taking a little bit more time um, than usual because running this on a, as a virtual machine with limited memory. There you go. Getting lining it project details. And so now we're going to quit the welcome window and really enter into the actual IntelliJ ID um, with uh, we should have the, the project on the left I mean like a pretty pretty much like a classical ID um, it's still loading There you go. So it's loading the project. Um, we're going to have to check first that um, it um, has the right um, JDK um, attached to the project. Uh, which is not always the case by default. So here usually what happens is that there are a whole bunch of things going on on the top, uh, the bottom right, sorry, of the window. Um, and so it's going to do all of these things for the first initialization of the project. Uh, we have to just let it all do all that. Uh, it might show some error or some issues regarding the JDK or the SDK or the Java version, and if it's the case, I'll show you how you can fix that. Yeah, we don't care about that. some time I should have put more memory into that VM um, okay so here yeah the project is not even completely um, yeah cursive updates yeah you don't need to enable that um, the 
tell you something about the license for cursive um, you don't need the free license actually works you don't need to buy a, li a license for cursive even if they tell you it's um, out the license is expired it is still going to work um, so we can forget about this this there you go finally um, sorry for that long delay so uh, here we have the project on the left uh, we're gonna see the files appearing this is the dot MD appear appearing here um, so the first thing we're going to do so we, we, we can already look at the source file um, and we're going to see our hello world file in uh, a core.clg file so it's always um, it's always the case that um, you have for any project always a core.clg um, and this is kind of your, your main um, namespace as we call it in Clojure um, and so we can have already a look at the core.clg the content so we have a main and here we have the syntax that is um, cursive allows us to recognize the closure syntax and have the proper uh, coloring and all of that um, and, and many other features that uh, are integrated uh, for uh, uh, closure within the ID um, and so um, we have a main here and this is what is called when um, hello world appeared before right um, so there are a few things we need to make sure we set up properly uh, um, what was taking a, what made it really really slow is that um, there were a whole bunch of indexing that was happening in the background so now it's over I decided to just pause the video and wait for um, this to be done so it should be a bit faster now um, so if I go here into file I can go to um, uh, 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 so yeah like I said before you can add the plugin somewhere um, I actually um, don't know on Windows where it is but there is a way here to add cursive if you uh, go to help and find action and you do um, plugin you should be able to um, um, uh, to find the place where to add the plugin and add cursive if you didn't do it before so here we're going to go into project structure um, this is an important window this is where you have all the important information about your project so it's trying to detect the JDK uh, see here in project it says no SDK so you're gonna click here and select the whatever version you have uh, we've installed the last one just now previously in this that same video so I'm gonna just um, select 20 but it doesn't have to be the last version um, uh, most uh, fairly recent versions uh, work perfectly fine so we're going to apply here um, if we go into platform setting SDKs uh, here we should be able to see our um, JDK version 20 uh, again it's pretty slow it's probably loading right now yes so uh, there it is um, so um, Yes, um, this this is an important window. This is where you manage all the uh, all all the the parameters for your project. So now the SDK is um, is uh, selected. So the other thing we need to do to make sure it works is to right click on project.clg and uh, pick add as lining in project, which it doesn't want us to do. So probably it's already. What idea is updating indexes? Oh, okay. So it's because we're st it's still updating indexes because again it's pretty slow. It is uh, over. So now we should be able to um, to add the project um, as so if we go all the way down as um, as lining in project here. Uh, so there's going to be some more background. 
activity going on here. Um, okay, so we should now be able to we should now be able to run the project here. I mean, not the project, the main um, as part of this project. So I'm just going to click on run. And so here it's going to execute the main uh, in a console window on the back, on the bottom. Um, and so the main has to be part of the core, right? So you should always have the core.clg. You can have all the namespaces, but for what we need to do in the context of that project, we don't need anything else. So we have our hello world here. Um, and uh, but the, the thing with executing like that, it works fine and we can call all kind of things from main, but um, it's not really the best way to develop and debug and test in Clojure. Really the best way is to use a REPL like we've done before. So what we're going to do here is we're going to edit configurations. We have our application configuration, the basic run of the main that is already there because we just did a run. Uh, but we're going to click on plus and add a local REPL configuration. Uh, we can just call it REPL. Uh, and we're going to leave everything by default except here. Uh, we're going to select run with line again and apply and OK. So we now have the possibility here to select uh, REPL here instead of the classic run. Um, and if I execute the ripple, oh, that's not really happy. Hello, access. Um, yeah, because the ripple is basically a sort of internal um, machine, so you, you can execute a lot of code through that. So maybe that's um, detected as a security threat. Um, so it's going to open. Um, a window on the right hand side of our IDE. It's taking a little bit of time again, um, where we're going to be able to, like, like we've done um, using the command line before, um, to run um, any kind of closure command, but also um, to test uh, functions in our uh, core.clg file, okay, or any kind of other namespace that we would create. Uh, we can load them into the ripple and test our custom functions, basically, right? So I uh, hear my window is pretty small, so I'm going to try to uh, maybe um, close the project window. Uh, so the ripple, uh, yeah, it does uh, always take a little bit of time to st to start. Here we can minimize that one. Okay. So once the uh, report is started, um, we can uh, simply here um, query anything like we've done before. So. Um, It's still loading. Um, so uh, three times four, for instance. Sorry about that, pretty slow again. Um, so uh, yeah, we can we can query, um, like I said before, uh, a whole bunch of things. Um, and if, if this video is too, too frustrating because it's so slow, um, I really suggest you look at the Mac uh, video, which works much better. Um, even because many of the things are exactly the same for both. Um, so, um, but just for the sake of uh, 
being complete for Windows users. I'm going to uh, finish on that. So yeah, again, if I want to uh, call some uh, thing like that, um, it's going to work as well. Uh, I'm mapping the decrement uh, function onto the vector. Um, now, what's interesting with the ripple is that I'm going to be also able to call some functions that are in my files, right? Um, so if I define a new function here, uh, my function with an argument x, um, sorry about that, um, and say just off the top of my head, um, like a print ln, my name is, X um, well the thing here is that if I try to call my function Hugo it's not going to work um, it's going to tell me that um, it's unable to resolve the symbol my function because it can't find it doesn't know about it. Why? Because we didn't load that file into the ripple. So the important step is to do a right click anywhere on the file. And then we're going to go to ripple down there and load file in ripples. Now I suggest after a while to just use the alt shift L uh, because you do it a lot when you develop. So um, it's just annoying to go through that every time. But if we do load into the ripple here, um, then now if I call uh, my function Hugo, it's going to print my name is Hugo, right? So you notice that just like here, it was returning 12 when I did uh, three times four, here it's returning nil because a print ln always returns um, nil, right? Um, if I wanted to return something else, I can add and Closure is interesting for that. You can actually have it's it's where it's not like absolutely entirely functional. You can have like multiple instructions one after the other. Uh, the last one is the one that is actually going to be um, the return value. So if I put five here uh, and I do um, was it uh, Alt Shift L I think and I load. So I did Alt Shift L to load the file right again to um, update the change. Now, if I call that same function, uh, it's going to return five instead of nil, right? Um, here it's pretty meaningless, but so you can have any function here, and um, that's that's how you can uh, you can test them. Um, what's what's really remarkable about closure is how it um, allows you to um, um, uh, to um, uh, to to work with with um, a lot of flexibility. As you notice, there is no typing here. We have no assumption on what my function is going to return, on what type of arguments it's taking. There's incredibly a lot of flexibility with what they call um, what they call uh, lazy evaluation um, and lazy sequence. Um, you you can really do. Um, you can do a map of, of my function. That means you're gonna apply it to a series of, of, of values um, into a lazy sequence. And the lazy sequence is remarkable and very useful for our project because it doesn't require, it's, it's a very, very, um, very high level structure that uh, assumes very little about what's in there, right? So if I map uh, my function to, you know, some numbers. Um, well, it's just going to uh, print my name is those numbers, right? But it doesn't have to be all the same type, right? I can have a, a Hugo in the middle and it's still gonna work. And it's gonna return the, the 555 in the end. Um, but um, yes, it's just uh, very interesting to notice that um, there are um, a lot of flexibilities with those um, 
uh, we can also have a key here and it's still going to work uh, fine. It's going to print the key because the print LN is going to take any of those and, um, and, and transform them into strings basically. Um, but um, yeah, just I just wanted to uh, mention that. Uh, so that's that's it. I really apologize for how slow it was and um, and messy. But you should have here everything you need to um, successfully make it work on on Windows. Uh, good luck with the next steps.